Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the buoyancy force. And we have three little examples to give you a feel for what it is and how to apply it. Essentially, the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. So when we take an object and we put it inside the liquid, we push away the amount of liquid in volume equal to the volume of the object. So, what we need to do is we need to take the volume of the object, which is essentially the cross-sectional area times the height, and we multiply that times the weight of that equal amount of volume of water that's being displaced. So essentially the buoyancy force is equal to the density of the liquid times acceleration due to gravity times the volume of the object, which is the same as the volume of the displaced liquid, which essentially is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. It really doesn't matter if you put an object in a little bit of water or a lot of water. In this case, if this object is made out of iron, the volume is 10 cubic centimeters, it will sink to the bottom, and the buoyancy force will be the same for both because both blocks displace an equal volume of water. And the height of the water there it makes no difference at all. It's simply the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced water, which is the density times the volume of the object, which is the same as the volume of, of the displaced water, times g, and there you are, buoyancy force is 0 0.098 newtons. And what if the density of the object is not as dense as the liquid you place it in, it will then float and part of the object will be above the water line. So if we want to know how much of it will be below the water line, what we do is, again, we say that the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, and so that is the density times the volume times acceleration to the gravity of the liquid. <clears throat> now that is equal to the weight of the object, and of course we need to take the full volume of the object and only the volume of the, the displaced liquid, which is the cross-sectional area of the object, times the height below the surface, where here is the cross-sectional area, times the full height of the surface. When we set them equal to each other, we then find that the height below the surface equals 0.8, which is the ratio of the density of the object divided by the density of the liquid. So the portion below the surface will be equal to the ratio of the density of the liquid, a uh, density of the object divided by the density of the liquid. And that gives you a pretty good feel for what the buoyancy force is. How did we do? One minute less. <laughs> Only one minute? <laughs>